Bonjour, all of you comic book geeks, readers and collectors. Welcome to another weekly top 10 of my favourite comics. And I'm going to have to get on with it without too much preamble this week. Oh, you know, I'm joking. You know I love preamble. Uh, because I've got one hell of a whinge of the week. I've got an epic whinge. So get ready. But I cannot let that overshadow a really, a really awesome week. And it's really weird. Because apart from two of my top ten, there is no superhero fair to be seen. Yet my whinge is. So make of that what you will. But I just thought that was interesting where I've got horror comics, I've got fantasy comics, I've got... I've got DC, Image, Dark Horse, Boom Studios. I've got everyone across the board. A really, really mixed bag of a, a, a beautiful week in comics. Um, I think I picked up, no, I don't know if you follow me over on Freds. Um, and if you do, hello to my Freds friends and all my sexy, sexy subscribers. Anyone who's liking my videos, particularly you little gang. You gang of fools. You gang of sexy, sexy fools that I love that are commenting and getting into it with me, I love it. Absolutely love it. And you know I do. That's what the actress said to the bishop. Obviously, you knew that one. I've got to get one of them in every video. Anyway, this is my top 10. I'm going to do five for a deep dive after the scroll. That's where the spoilers will be, guys. And there are some quite heavy spoilers because I've got... Yeah, I've got one that's the final... It's the final issue of, of, of a story arc, so it's going to give everything away. So please, please, guys, if you're reading it or not, and, you know, the spoilers are going to be after the scroll. Before that, I'm going to give you my top ten, my top five for the deep dive, and another five uh, that I just can't do a deep, otherwise my videos are gone for hours and hours, and I don't think anyone wants that. Do they? And we're going to have the whinge. And then right at the end... If you're going to bear with me that far. Right at the end, we're going to do cover of the week. Now, I, I like it. It's a little bit, call it self-indulgence, call it a little bit of fun, or call it both. But we're going to imagine that we've only got pocket money for one comic. Do you remember those days? You, you would approach the spinner with excitement. The spinner rack or the, the supermarket shelf or the newsagent shelf or the drugstore shelf, depending on your side of the Atlantic Ocean. And you but you oh, and it would be the tractor beam of the cover, it'd be the what would it what would it be that sucks you in to kind of leaf because there would be covers you would literally subconsciously go, no, no, no. <laughs> That's what we're going to do right at the end of this video. It's all chapterized, guys. So if you want to click, the, uh, jump the spoilers, if there's a comic like in my top five for the deep dive, if there's comics you haven't read, have read, you can jump. And I'd rather you watch it all, to be fair. Just sit down, relax, and listen to me waffle for about half hour, usually, on the top ten of the week. But nevertheless, I will, I will allow it. As long as you like, subscribe and comment. Or two out of the three. Go on, that, that's a deal. Is that not a deal? Anyway, let's get on with it. I kept it to four minutes. I can see the timer. I kept it to four minutes preamble. Sometimes I go on. Anyway, right, stop it. First up. So this is going to be my top five. This is, these are my top five comics. We're going to start. We're going to start right here. Issue three of this, of three issues. Obviously, the film is out. I might put this on my thumbnail, you know, just to get, just to get the old channel co channel content, you know, the views and that. Anyway, I, you know, I'm joking. But this was, this was a pleasant, unexpectedly weird, a weird and wonderful read. Joe Kelly done something just a little bit different with this one, guys. So if you haven't picked this up. And you think like me, oh, it's another Deadpool comic. And then on top of that, oh, it's another Deadpool and Wolverine comic. Honestly, guys, th this one was worth it for free issues. The Adam Cuba artwork didn't hurt much either. 
you know what I mean. Uh, it kind of spiced up the the pie. This this so that's superhero. It is another superhero comic, and then we're over superheroes this week. So please bear with me because I've got some surprising choices here. Now this is the variant cover, Alt uh, Black Panther, but my old mate Paul at Comics and Fantasy in Hornchurch, Essex. How are we doing, my old mucker? He didn't get the cover A's in until next week. So I had to pick this up to review it. And I thought, oh, go on then. Oh, you know, I'll read Ultimate Black Panther. But I've got to say, this was a stonking issue. They've What, what I think they've done is this issue six, they've taken too long to get here. That's my only... That, that I think that's my overarching six issue summary. Uh, Brian Hill, is it? You know, I have to check the names, then, yeah. Brian Hill, uh, he is because he wrote Blade and he did a good job of Blade. He is Brian Hill. Um, what he's done is I think he's taken too long to get here, but now it's here. God, this was such a good issue where all of the strands he's been, all of the threads he's been weaving are making sense and making relevance and then they can all get on with it. Like, you know, all the character introductions and all that. But I've got to admit, you could have done it quicker, Brian, than five issues. This should have been issue three and issue six should have been wrapping up your first arc, in my humble opinion. Nevertheless, this was... They've totally redeemed themselves with that. Uh, I've re really enjoyed it and, and unexpected as well. So I don't... You, you can't call Nemesis... A superhero. So they're the two superhero comics. This return is in tip. He's in. He's with, he's with Dark Horse now. Old Mark Millar, and <laughs> um, a totally bonkers, a totally bonkers nuts comic where no comic character ever dies. Nevertheless, Mark seems to make it so much fun, and seems to give you each issue. Just seems to give you something new. It's, it, it's enough. A little bit like that spark, that dare I say it, that Garth Ennis has lost a little bit. Where Garth Ennis is kind of, and I, I love, listen, don't come at me, don't come at me yet. Where back in the day, Garth Ennis used to, that was his shtick, you know, the boys, etc., etc. Are they one trick ponies? Of course they're not. But Millar has upped the ante a bit in the weirdness stakes when Ennis was doing Preacher and Hellblazer before that and I have been researching those two just recently uh, looking back on them and realising how much he was throwing against it uh, throwing against the wall and seeing what was going to stick Miller does that he seems to do that issue by issue in with every character he does and I applaud him for that and I love and that was a good like I say mad as a bag of frogs talking of animals let's see what I did there this continues to be an absolutely fabulous book. I, if, if, there are certain books that I want to do every month they come out. There are certain books I want to do the book of the week every time they come out. This is one of them. Fabok, that's why it's in the top five. We're going to have a look at some of his beautiful artwork because I can't resist it. I absolutely can't resist it. He's pulled out the stops and Jeff Johns has spread himself out with... Uh, Red Coat and this and Geiger, he's really managing to do that kind of comedy, light-hearted stuff. With this, he's doing that kind of hard sci-fi, and with Geiger, he's doing the post-apocalyptic action. With you know, very very good, and all all the Ghost Machine books are well worth. And I'm going to surprise you. I'm pulling it out of the hat this week for book of the week. And you're going to understand why I'll use that metaphor, is it? <laughs> right. <laughs> that was a bit of a cheap shot, wasn't it? To be fair, pulling it out of the hat. Anyway, this is Book of the Week. Only because I think one of my sabbatical weeks was when Issue 1 came out. And I was very impressed. And I don't think, unless, and I haven't done any research, now I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. Um, I don't think I did Issue 1. And the reason why I'm making this book of the week is because I'm thinking I didn't do issue one. And if even if I did, this 
I'm really enjoying as well. So both issues, whether I did it or not, two issues in, quirky artwork, an unexpected origin tale for a, a DC character that has been around for a long, long while. And it's, it's one of those times where you think, oh, I've seen it all now. What, what other story are they going to tell? And to be honest, old Tamaki Marikai, no, Mariko Tamaki, oh, I had to do it, didn't I? <laughs> Mariko Tami, Tamaki uh, story has managed to just bring a little freshness to the origin story and make it make it modern, even though it's a really old character, to be fair. So, yep, yeah, that is going to be my book of the week. So you can skip ahead and do what you want now, because I'm just going to mention another five books that are in my top ten. That's the top five. I know this is it kind of reverse order in a way, isn't it? But anyway, horror. <sighs> yeah, Hello Darkness. Anthology. Now, as an um, uh, as a English comic book reader, I grew up... It's in our DNA. Anthologies are in our DNA. Because we grew up with weekly comics that would have three or four pages of an ongoing story continuing every week. Anthology. Yeah, I know you wanted to... I, I knew... You wanted a definition of anthology. So that's why I love an anthology. And this was this was great. And it came out the same week as this bad boy. And oh, I do prefer this because I am a geeky old hog. And this EC recreation, they've obviously got the rights to all the bits and bobs, including the font. The old font. So if you've ever read reprints or you've got actual uh, Golden Age copies of EC Comics, they're using the same font and kind of bringing back that feel, but with a modern with a modern twist. So both of these horror comics are both worth that. They are both worth that, that uh, worth getting. They they really have uh, employed the talent worthy of uh, you know. Tales of the Fantastic. So both of those were good. Thoroughly enjoyed them. Uh, and keeping on the horror theme, this wrapped up this week. What a moody, creepy, and in the end, ex exciting story this, story this was. If, if you haven't picked it up, there will obviously, because it's only four issues, and I can't believe it's, it's, you know, I love it for the fact that they've wrapped it up in four issues, but that'll make a nice, slim... Uh, graphic novel, trade paperback, collect omnibus, whatever you want to call it. Um, very, very nicely done. It's such a creepy. I think I did call it evocative in the first, first or second issue, because it was just a creepy, just creepy enough. And how he, how they've used the the, the creature. Very good, very good. Just enjoyed every issue. Just, just one of those, and not a mind bending read either. Just a, a kind of easy, creepy horror read. So, and switching on to fantasy now. So we're going from horror to fantasy. How Reminder is continuing to make this. You know, there are some good fantasy books out there. And to be fair, they're by image mostly. Uh, Kaya is another one. And the sacrifices, do yourself a favour, guys. If you like your fantasy with a, a little bit of an edge, a little bit of a twist, then, and it, it doesn't hurt that it's uh, the, that the artwork is, well, in this issue, is Andrea Lima Arroyo. But before that, I'm sure it's been someone else. Anyway, still beautiful artwork. Remind, one of Reminder's best, Rick Reminder's best. So, yeah, thoroughly recommend. And then I know this is an easy one, and I know I've thrown this in before, but nevertheless, a story of Conan in his early days. And you can't beat a little tale of the years of your, uh, in, in Conan's past, in the snow. And a little special guest appears at the end. Now, I don't know who it is, but I can't think it's Red Sonia. But they are teasing us here with this character on the cover. And, yeah. So I can't, I can't believe it's her, but, mm, but, you know. But a beautiful illustration, nevertheless. And it's in my top ten. Doug Braithwaite, Jim Zubb as all. 
and Jim Zub has really got into a groove here, mixing the descriptive element of what Conan comics need and the action-packed side. So, love it. Right, guys, before the scroll. So, that is my top ten, and what a wonderful week. And you know me. I'm Mr. Positive. I'm Mr. Look on the bright side. I'm Mr. Glass Half Full. Except when it comes to comics like this. Now, I'm glad I've got the variant cover because it is a thing of beauty. Other than that, this is everything wrong at Marvel. This is absolutely the biggest load of dross I have read in a long, long while. Now, Ms. Marvel is a lame duck. I mean, oh, by the way, Wolverine, Wolverine, Wolverine S isn't in it. She's not in it, by the way. She's on the cover of issue two, but she's not in it. Because all there is in it is Ms. Marvel, a.k.a. Kamala Khan, which is one of the, which is the worst lame duck character ever to be invented. Um, and, and, and Sophie Cuckoo, I don't know, but I'm trying to get back into X-Men. So you better tell me who Sophie Cuckoo is. Oh, do you want to know who she is? Oh, it's her friend at school. So the first eight, six, eight, ten pages is Ms. Marvel getting to school. Then the next four pages is, oh, there's a teacher at school that knows we're mute, that knows we're mutants. And is he, is he a mutant? Oh, absolute, absolute ridiculous. Oh, and then guess what? Oh, they might be underage, but they get into a nightclub. Oh, and then they get into trouble. Oh, my God. So Sophie and Kamala get into trouble in a nightclub. Oh, she does turn up. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Might have to edit that out. I must have skipped a. I must have skipped two pages of excitement where Wolverine S turns up. You're chasing ghosts, Miss Marvel. Oh, I've forgotten all about it. Oh, and she breaks her phone. She puts a hole in her phone. Um, and she's not happy. And right at the beginning, look at look at this for a double page spread. Look. What an action-packed double-page spread. Who are they writing this for? Who wants to see a double-page spread of a girl walking through traffic? You want to see a double-page spread of an alien invasion? Or a double-page spread of, I don't know, even if she's attacking the alien horde. Walking through traffic, a double-page spread. This is absolutely the, the crappiest, crappiest comic. I'm sorry. Sorry I'm on a bit of a rant, but because I've been trying to get back into the X-Men post Krakoa, I can't, you know, I kind of rejoin the comic book community after a few years off, and I couldn't get back in the X-Men. I love the X-Men. Collected it for many years. Yeah, even back when it was one title. Do you remember that? <laughs> and I don't expect it to be one title. But what I don't expect it to be is written for an audience that doesn't exist. And do you know what that audience is? It's 12 to 14 year old girls. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the audience for this comic, Marvel, does not exist. Here endeth the whinge. I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to calm, I'm going to go and have a cold shower. And then I'm going to come back after the scroll. And we are going to do... We're going to get back to the good stuff. Forget that. Just save your money and don't go anywhere near that. And we are going to do a deep dive on the top five. So join me after the scroll. Okay, guys. So apologies. Apologies for that moment. <laughs> and let's get let's get on with the top five like, of, the, of, of the best comics. Like I say, this this was an unexpected uh, treat, and in no no small part due to Adam Kubert's artwork, even though it's the wrong way up. <laughs> but I do kind of get it if he's giving the Deadpool motif. This this forgive me if this goes off the screen, guys. But you you know you get the the general impression. But Adam Kubert always pr properly on point, a, a great artist. 
Uh, they went a bit meta with this one, saying, you know, uh, seriously, you could duck after the title spread, and then the title spread comes so very, very meta. <laughs> but then, you know, that's Deadpool. So what, what, what do we expect? Well, what we got was some beautiful Adam Cuber artwork, and Joe Kelly's story was really, really weird and wonderful. This new villain. This, well, he, he might he might not be new, to be fair. Uh, these two, as the main protagonists, should I... I'm, I'm better off saying, because I'm not heavy into the modern X-Men, so... But look how beautiful this stuff is. This is this is a leap for, for Adam Kubert, uh, and a nice one. No, not a leap, just a tiny, tiny... You can just see how he's... You know, how his art is maturing. Look at that. And like I say, it is gloriously down, down to Adam Kubert, to be fair, this that why I enjoyed this book. But nevertheless, three issues of, of of great of great story. And this is why I said spoiler alert. <laughs> That's what you call mutation, guys. <laughs> that is what you call a mutation. Anyway. <laughs> you know, I've, I've heard about a monkey on my back, but I don't know about a, a Wade Wilson on my back. But anyway, you get where I'm coming from when I say this was a weird and wonderfully twisted story by Joe Kelly. Uh, only three issues, which is good. That's how I like my Deadpool, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's why it scored so many points with me. Um then this is another superhero book this week that scored scored a load of points for me. Uh, nice cover. I don't know. We'll have to find out who done the cover, won't we? Now cover artist Boss Logic. Uh, oh no, Stefano. Oh, Caselli and Curiel. But he doesn't often uh, he doesn't often do painted stuff, does he? So very nice cover. And they finally get on with it. Here's what our bad guy's up to. Here's what Conchu. He's up to. He's trying to. He's using the green goo that they found in a previous issue to save lives and create uh, an army to save lives and, and and walk like gods among these African towns and villages and countries. Create a temple, and Old T'Challa is is you know he's saying oh you know what's going on. Him and Shuri got Old Aurora and um, Killmonger having a little bit of kissy kissy. But other than that, this story romp, romps along. And here we're given an excuse. There's, here's Ra. So you've got, here's Ra. <laughs> uh, who's obviously the, the badder guy than, than Konshu, but they're still the two main bad guys. Setting their new found minions onto a mining company uh, or a mineral refinery. And here's where the wider... The, but what I did, I did like is they just got on with it. All of this storytelling just gets on with it. Yep, no words needed. No, thank you. That's it. Thank you for Conchu. We know what's going on here, don't we? We're not stupid. That's it. We just need a boom. And then, oh my God, what's going on here? Again, we don't need five pages to be explaining what this is. No, it's Black Panther's arrived. So, yep, thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this issue it, it my only like i say like i said before my only beef is that it's taken them six issues uh, if they could have got they, they could have got here to this point this should have been a midpoint um and then from there ramping it up uh to 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 the end um and more madness from mark millar and Oh, another broken phone, actually. It's broken phone um, in NYX, but we don't go there. Let's not go there. A nice art job by Valerio Giangiordano. And Lee Luffridge is always on colours. He always does a good job. But how do we fix a completely broken nemesis? Well, you know, we... the, the Look at this. That's, I, I love that. That's a great, uh, a great image. Uh, well, what do we do? We kidnap him, the kind of cult that he works for, whatever you want to call him. Uh, look at this stuff. <laughs> he just can't help himself, can he, old Marky boy? 
and yet yeah, blood blood letting a plenty and then just when you think the blood letting's over no all these people here that are bound and gagged in i don't know why they're in little cod pieces but anyway they have to have all their throats cut to fix nemesis <laughs> that and that is how bonkers this comic is and that is where you can see, you can feel, here he is. Look. This is where you can feel Mark Millar, his tongue is so firmly in his cheek writing this stuff that, um, you know, how are you feeling now, Matthew? Just after one issue, we're not even, a. this isn't even the last page. Uh, but yeah, a great return. A great return to this character. It's kind of like, I don't know. I don't, you know, you just don't know what to expect from that and it, it delivers something else that has delivered consistently is this book out of all of the ghost machine tiles and I'm, I'm doing a deep dive on this because Jason Fabot looks like he's having a whale of a time on the artwork of this look at this it just looks look at this it's beautiful beautiful comic book artwork but although and that's a proper double page spread because the book is about animals like the book is about this is an attack um so that's what you want a double page spread of not a double page spread of a girl walking a giant girl walking through traffic nevertheless he's back to the storytelling now alongside jeff johns and yeah it's, it's just it really romps along these two characters make a really great duo up against the enemy look at stuff like this it's just one of those action comics you know those sci-fi action comics that you just yeah it's just a great story there's a story there great characters a great story here's the villain here's our heroes you know you've got a kind of you've got a few sexy you know bits and bobs going on you know a big brute of a villain and blah 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 so you know it's you could call it standard stuff, but I think it's Fabox artwork that elevates it, as well as being a, a superb, a very imaginative story by Jeff Johns. Look how much is going on. Literally look how much is going on. But what they don't do is overplay the animal element of it. It, it is still about our, our two main characters, which is uh, Rook and uh, the, the woman. Whatever. Um, I, don't, I, have to forget, I had to forget something, didn't I? Um, anyway, yeah, and he's, he's partner in crime, as it were. Um, and her name is, as he tries to, uh, Dire Wolf. That's it. So she's the wolf lady. He's the rook, he's the bird man, and she's the wolf lady. And very sultry and sexy she is too. So, yeah. Nice cover of well, but I don't know if he'll be in cover of the week, but, you know. But anyway, I suppose we could call Zatanna a superhero but I don't think so and I'm glad they've done this in the black alongside the black label uh, imprint because this is uh, has been a delightful surprise I've kind of got a soft spot for Zatanna as a character I do like the magic characters like Doctor Strange over at Marvel um, and, and bits and bobs like that but what what Mariko Tamake has done with this retail and Javier 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 Rodriguez has done it's almost like a retelling of the origin story so here's, you've got your dream set you, you've got your moody dream sequences here which is artwork I wouldn't normally I wouldn't have put his artwork into this story but it's, it's, it's making it left left field enough to to make to make all this work like this dream sequence stuff to make this work and then we're back in you know where we left off last last month where Satana's doing her Vegas show and a, a, a demon has appeared right in the middle of it she's got a mysterious guest in her shows and you know we don't know who she is yet here's the demon and and it all moves on from there but what makes this the book of the week is that although it, it, you know it's DC and one of their magic characters but they're just going nicely. They're just doing something different with it. You could you could say grounded. 
but it's not because if it's grounded you wouldn't have this demon huntress you know trying to get Satana on her side and Satana's just saying no I don't know magic all I know is tricks that's the basic shtick of the whole thing I don't know magic I just know tricks and she's trying to get Satana on side to fight a bigger foe um, and I, I just think it's nice artwork that, that that is just pitched nicely for this story which is in the magical element rather than uh, using Zatanna as a superhero or superheroine. Are you allowed to say superhero or they're all superheroes now? They're all non, non, no, not non binary, but they're all non descriptive. Oh, anyway, oh, we don't go there. A um, little bit of conflict between the two. I love the design of this character as well. How Javier uh, Rodriguez has done this art. Uh, so that, and that is why this is wonderfully eclectically different I'm trying to find verbs and nouns and descriptive everything but that is my that's definitely a good a good book of the week and apologies if I didn't make that very very um, explanatory but just know that I've read two issues of this comic and it's really worth it <laughs> so know that right as far as cover of the week goes though guys that isn't going to do it is it if we had our pocket money we ain't going but that look we're as if we're going to buy that, right, when you've got that on the shelf. <laughs> and you've got a torn apart Deadpool and half of a Wolverine there and Wolverine with his claws out. Like, come on. And talking of Wolverines with his claws out, I know this is a variant and you know I'm not the big variant boy. But that is a nice, that is a nice image. If you're going to do a female Wolverine, then, you know, a girl, a girl Wolverine. I'm only joking, by the way. Uh, then that's how you do it. A couple of our horror images. Lieber Mergeo. Oh, I love this. I just love the fact that you're drawn to a mutant arm and then an axe. I just love the way my eye went. My eye literally went this way. Where focus on his belly first. For he's just like me. And then his mutant arm. Not like me, by the way. And then the axe. But not. There's just enough little bit of a blood splatter. But it's not dripping. It's not dripping in it. Um, as he's burning in the background, you know, the more, you know, you're just sucked in to the whole, I think that is a beautiful image. And so is that. More impactful. Not a lot going on. That's just bosh. But <laughs> I just think that's wonderful. This Dan Panosian, I think that's great Conan. For, for a Conan comic, you want your sultry redhead and you want Conan ready for war with a skull scabbard in sword um I'm, I'm going to include this one i know detective i've given detective comics a rest it was a good read but the cover gotham batman looking on a gotham burn i just love that as an image as, a, as, a, as an image there's a classic here this i could have added this to me whinge of the week because it's crap absolute crap comic but a ramos as for, for a ramos image that might have sucked me into the comic then this is class, I think, anyway. And just on a choir, just on a choir to note, I'm just going to include this very, very quickly by Lionel Francis Yu, who they've got to do a lot of Star Wars covers and what a glorious artist he is, but, you know, the dark side of Luke Skywalker. If there's something that's going to get you into a Star Wars comic, Vader, Image, Luke, R2 and Woman, Lightsaber, you know, come on, come on. You, I mean, but you, you do have to be predispositioned to a Star Wars comic. Nevertheless, it isn't the comic, uh, the the cover of the week. This is too static, as glorious as it is. A beautiful cover, too static. We're gonna leave Alba Mergio there, as far as this is concerned. You know, for scary tactics, uh, we're gonna leave that in. That's too. The Batman one's too static, but I just like I I just personally like the image of Gotham burning while Batman watches on. But you need to know you need to be reading uh, detective comics. Um, is MYX going to do it? No, I don't think so. I don't think Strange can. This is again, it does say everything it needs to on the team, doesn't it, to sell a comic? To be fair, so I do think. No, do you know what, guys? Even these two horror, as beautiful an image as that is, 
Come on. That's the one that's going to get me. And I know the film's out. And I'm not just doing it because the film is out. It's because it is Adam Kubert. And it was a good read. And it has got everything going on. There's action. There's chopped bodies. There's torsos and flailing legs are plenty. So come on. There, there isn't any as, as beautiful as illustrations as they were. This this would have been the one that, that got my that, that would have got my attention and got my money probably because the inside obviously it's, you follow it up with Adam Kubert wonderful Adam Kubert artwork. So if you've stayed with me this far, guys, I really appreciate that and thank you so much. Apologies if the whinge of the week was a little bit stressful. I don't normally get that animated with it anymore with the whinges of the week. I normally sidestep them, but I just had to give everyone a little bit of a warning with that because, yeah, it, it, it was crap. Anyway, until next week, I hope you can join me again for another top 10. Um, and I will bid you adios.